or and and it's like here's what Satan does. He's like, no, no, you need to get in there. You know, don't you let somebody you just you get in there, go in with both. Yeah, you you got it. So you do it, and then immediately he switch. As soon as it happens, you sin, and then immediately he goes, <laughs> you suck, right? <laughs> like I, I mean, with, you call yourself a, and you did that. You see how he does that? He, 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 he urges you into the sin, and then he backs away like, you did it. Accuser, he points a finger. You're it. You, you, you. Why'd you do that? What's wrong with you? Accusation after accusation that just, man, it's in, and the Bible calls them fiery darts. Right? So he just, he'll just, he'll just pick them at you. Pick them at you. And it, it took a while even for me to go, wait, 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 whoa, hey, hold up. Wait a minute. Let's put some love in it. Is that a song? There you go. Oh, well, that's not me. See, they're not, they're not from God. You see, that's a spiritual thing going on. I know that God would never go, man, what's wrong with you? Because God is smart. God is. He knows everything. He knew I was going to do it. He knows what, see, what the difference about God and the devil is that God knows all about you and loves you anyway. So God's never going to look at you and not love you because of who you are, because he knew who you were before he ever decided to love you in the first place. It's only Satan who likes to come back on the backside of it and go, ain't no way you're lovable. Ain't no way you got anything to offer. Ain't no way you need to be serving. Ain't no way you need to be doing that. Look at what you did, look at what you did last night. Now you're in church this morning. Some of you may be hearing that right now. Remember what you did last night? I bet there's cameras. <laughs> and if you can't remember, we'll show it on the big screen. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I can't remember. The devil will remind you here in about noon. You'll go, oh. <laughs> Starting to become clear. Yeah. That's what he does. But God doesn't do that. That's not his voice. So that's the first step. Understand whose voice it is. When an accusation happens, you stop and you go, oh, that's not, no, stop. That's not what God does. So if it's not of God, why am I sitting here listening to it? Why am I sitting here beating myself up over something God wouldn't say? I know who I am. I am a child of God. I am one of his kids, and, one of his, and he would never talk to one of his kids that way. Only the accuser would do that. I am a good whatever i am what god says i am i'm not who the devil says i do we'll get to that in just a minute look at isaiah 54 uh 17 because this is a prayer if you were if i were to pray for you this is what i'd say that no weapon forged against you will some of them say prosper and prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you okay it's not not every one of the other people's tongues it's every tongue of accusation that comes from the accuser all right this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. This is God saying nothing will prosper as long as you understand that the accusations aren't real. The, the, what anybody says from, a, from, from, from the devil's point of view, or from Satan's point of view, or evil's point of view, they're not true. They're not true about you. Yeah, you could have done it, but it doesn't make you what you did. Why is it that you and I want to identify as our sin? Well, I'm a liar. Well, you do lie. It doesn't make you a liar. See, that's what the world teaches us. Whatever you've done, that's what you are. If, if, you've, if you're an alcoholic, then that's what you are. And, and, I, and I, I, I fight against this a little bit with AA to be known by what you are. To always say that I am. I am one. No, I was one. And I'm okay with being was one. Now, I can still slip up. That's not going to make me back to what I was. It's still going to make me somebody who's saved by grace. And God knows who I am. And he's never going to point his finger at me and go, see, you aren't really who you say you are. Because I am. I don't have to be known by what I do. And that's just us. That's what we do. Look at Revelation 12.10. I love this. 
Then I heard a voice, this, this is John talking, then I heard a voice, loud voice in heaven say, now I've come in salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. Here it is. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God when day and night has been hurled down. All right. It happens all the time. It's not just whenever you screw up because you and I screw up a lot. It is all the time. He constantly, in your mind, wants you to believe what you are doing is who you are. Well, you're this, you're that, you can't do this, you can't do that. You're, here's your limitations. You feel this thing in you that God says, I want you to go. Oh, we'll just use Guatemala because you can't go to Guatemala because the trip's full. So I can use this and not be guilty into going. You feel God saying, you should go serve in Guatemala. You can't do that. You can't afford it. You can't do that. You can't get off work. You can't do that. You, you know, you don't, you're scared. So you're, so you're, you're a fearfully um, uh, broke uh, and what? There, there was the other one. You're just this stuff. And you're like, that's why I can't do it. That's why I can't do it. I can't do it. So he accuses you of who you are so that you'll turn around and change what God's trying to get you to do. I want you to go. I want you to go over there and I want you to tell that person about me. I want you to share with them about me. An accuser immediately goes, no, no, they know you. <laughs> they were on the bar stool next to you. You can't tell them. Don't do that. They're not going to believe you. Really? Why not? Why not? Did you do something while you were there that was stupid? Yeah. Why, why, then why as a Christian can't you say, I'm sorry, I went overstep. I went too far. Let me tell you why. Here's how I know this. Because this God inside of me is always with me. And I'm not who he's saying I am. Or you can step back and go, you're right. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do what God says because of what he says I am. I can take the accusation and I can live it. I can live it out. Because that's what you're doing. As soon as you believe what the accuser says, you're living it out. You might as well be that. But that's not what God says you are. That's not who God says you are. He has constantly going after you. Listen, and he's already been defeated once. And we're told that the whole thing's going to... Look, we've read the end of the story, right? This is why it burns my rear end when you hear Christians talk about how we're losing the battle. Of, of how what's going on on the planet is our fault. All right? It's not. Now... You may not be doing what God wants you to do because you're not listening, but that's as far as it goes. You're not responsible for the rest of the planet. You're responsible for you doing what God asked you to do. Now, he may ask you to go do something, so you better go do it somewhere around the planet. He may ask you to say something, but it's going to sound a lot like him when you say it. Be careful. And he's going to want it, but this accuser is doing this all the time, and we've already been told that he's been beaten, and he's going to be beaten one more time completely. And in this interim, we have to recognize that he's after us. Now, that begs me to ask the question, why? Why? If this whole planet life is bad, why does he want to even mess with us? I mean, you're already a Christian. You're signed, you're sealed, it's, it's done. You know where you're going when it's over. Why then? Why then? Others. You see, if he can get you to believe what he's accusing you of, you won't be a Christ follower. Or you won't look like a Christ follower. And if you don't look like a Christ follower... No one's going to be attracted to the Christ you follow. Yes, the devil already knows he can't change anything about your future. He can just make you think he can. Number one, he's a liar. Today he's an accuser. So this whole thing of us following him and not listening to what he's accusing us of primarily is so that people will see you in a different light. They can look at you and they can see that sometimes your actions match their actions, but your outlook never does. You see, people aren't looking for you to not sin. They're looking for how you respond to sin. 
They're looking for how it now changes your attitude. It now looking to, that, well, I believe that God has saved me from everything and he's my ultimate joy. But listen, they're watching to see if something bad happens. If you don't go, well, he's my ultimate joy except for right now. Because right now I'm really upset because this happened. See, the world is already there. The world already lives in, I'm happy today because everything's good. I'm not happy today because some bad things have happened. And they live on this roller coaster. And what they're looking for is something stable. And when Christians come at them and they say, hey, I've got the solid rock that tends to shift. Uh, No, I've got the solid rock that I stand on and everything happens around me. And I seem, and and I'm steady. I am steady because the Bible and Christ and the spirit inside of me, whichever one you want to listen to, shows me where I'm secured in. And yet the devil just wants to knock you off of that at any time. Because if he can get you down, he can keep people from seeing Christ. See, the whole thing would be a lot easier if we just got to sit on our duffs and God could just make people Christians. Wouldn't that be a lot easier? And when I get to heaven, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. (laughs) Maybe I won't. You see, when the devil talks to you about God, he lies. Remember in Genesis, whenever he approached Eve and he said, did God really say? Have you ever heard that in your life? Where the devil will say, I don't think God will mind. You go on. You'll be all right. I mean, look at all the other Christians. They're doing it. And evidently, well, or or remember, God's not gonna, God's not gonna judge you for that. God's not gonna, God wouldn't care. You're gonna be fine. So when he talks to you about God, when you hear these things that are trying to convince you to go ahead and sin, it's the devil and he's lying. But the minute you do it, or when he talks about you, he accuses. You notice he never takes any responsibility. You've never been sitting around your house going, I really feel like evil wants me to do some things. <laughs> right? I mean, you never sit around and, and just imagine the devil going, <laughs> I made you do that. That was good. That was good. That was me. No, it's always back at you. You're not worried. You did that on your own. You decided that you should do that. You, now you, that guilt, that's your fault. That shame, that's your fault. You need to own that, right? Anybody ever told you to own something? The devil always wants you to own it. And God's up there going, no, give it away. Give it away. Don't own that. Don't own that. Let me have that sin. I already paid for it once anyway. It's mine. Why are you taking it back? One side, it's all your fault. It's never his. On the other side, it's never been your fault. It's always been his fault. And I'm not holding you responsible. And when we can start to understand that, we can start to believe that, our life starts to change. No, we don't get to go out and do all kinds of stupid stuff and just go, (laughs) we start to find ourselves more in tune with him. And we start doing less things that affect our relationship with God. And we stop listening to what he says. Now, let me, okay, that was the intro according to my notes. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. There's a really cool story, and it's right there. All right, so go to Zechariah 3, verse 1. I'll give you the context. Zechariah has a vision, and he sees this um, heavenly courtroom. All right, and there's three players involved. There's God the judge. There's uh, Zechariah. I should have. I wouldn't have had to work too hard. Uh, people are texting me. Uh, so the, there's God the judge. There's Zechariah, who's the defendant. And there's Satan, who is the um, accuser or the, the prosecutor. All right? Uh, and, and what's really interesting is when we start to read this, Satan actually appears to have a good case. A lot like the times when he goes after you. I mean, he, he's got a good case. Mo- most everything he says about God, he lies, but what he says about you, it's true. The the things you do, they're true. The devil doesn't come to you, okay, so let's just say um, you like porn. I don't know. 
He's not going to come to you and say, you like to lie. Right? He's going to go after you for what's true about your life. He's just going to make you think that because of that being you, you can't be one of God's. So he's always, he's got a decent case. I mean, if it was about sin all the time, if it was about this, he'd probably win. But watch what happens in this story, because this is what happens in your life. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan, sta- oh, so I said that wrong. Joshua's the defendant, sorry. And Joshua's the high priest. And, and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. Just keep going. We're going to go to the three. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this man a burning snick, stick snatched from the fire? Keep going. Now Joshua, check this. Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. This is what Zechariah is seeing. Joshua should have never been, ever, in filthy clothes. Never. Okay, so as a physical high priest, always been in a clean robe. Never a stain. If there was ever a stain, you changed it immediately. All right, you got rid of it. Filthy clothes has always been a symbol of sin in the Bible. All right, so what we're seeing here is that there's actually a case. There, there's, there's, he's right. Look, he did this. Did it. And if you were being held on what you did, God would have to. He would have to judge you every single time if you were being held up to him based on what you did. But you're not, all right? You're not that way. Now, this is what's really cool. The angel, the angel, before the angel, this is Jesus, okay? It's actually, I'm going to give you a good word. This is for all of my seminary classes, all right? This, this pays for the entire thing, all right? This word right here, Christophany, big word. Christophany, it means Christ appearing in a non-physical form. So that's how Jesus is in the Old Testament. It's a Christophany. If you'll remember, there was the three guys that were thrown into a furnace. Uh, in, um, yeah, yeah, there. Those three people. And when, when, the, when they looked into the furnace, there were four there. And then when they came out of the furnace, there were only three more. See, that fourth one was a Christophany. It was Christ. Not in physical form. He was just there. It happens. All right? So that's, that's a Christophany. So this right here is a Christophany. So you're welcome. Seminary's been paid for. That's good. We got to use it one time. <laughs> we don't have to worry about it anymore. Anyway, so, so, he, so he sees this, and we see Jesus standing there. Here's what, here's what just jump on. Uh, no, I got another verse I want to throw in there first. Go, now jump over to 1 John 2, 1. Because just imagine, that's you. You're in filthy. You're standing there, and, and the devil goes, but didn't you say that? But, but didn't you do that? But didn't you go there? But didn't you, uh, didn't you, didn't you post that in our modern society? Didn't you, didn't you go after them? Wasn't that you? And you have to answer that question. Yes, it was me. Aren't you wearing filthy clothes, Joshua? Yes, I am. I write to you this, children, so that you will not sin. But if you do sin, here we go. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Now, see, God has the desire... And then he has a knowledge. He has a desire that you won't be an idiot. But he has a knowledge you're going to be. All right? So, to rectify that accounting problem he has, he put Jesus in the middle. And God's up there going, I desire that they don't sin. And Jesus says, they're going to do it anyway. But I paid the price. And God says, good enough for me. He's the advocate. He advocates for you. Remember, if you were held accountable for the things you did, God would have to judge you and punish you every single time you did it. So every time you do something stupid, Jesus says, I got this. It's already been covered. And God says, okay. (laughs) Still covered. Still covered. I'm just going to stand here. Still covered, right? (laughs) Right? Right, for many of us, yeah, you'll sin. You'll be like, I'm sorry, and Jesus is like, I got it. And then you're like over there sinning while Jesus is going, it's covered, that kind of thing. That's how constant this is. 
It's constant, constant, constant. He never takes his eyes off you. God never stops accepting Christ's payment for you. So it's stupid when you're standing over there going, well, I can't please God anymore because I did this. And Jesus is like, what? No, I got it. It's covered. Don't worry. We're good, right? God says, yeah, we're good. Jesus, you're, you're good with them. Yeah, I'm good with them. I mean, you went to the cross. I said it would be fine. It's fine. So you mean I'm not? I'm not the sin that I say I am? I'm not the sin that the devil says I am? That's not me? No. You're, Jesus would look at you and go, no, you're what I say you are. You're what, you're what God wants you to be because... I'm standing between you two. See, you're not even becoming better. You're just as bad as you were. But you've got a guy standing in between you and God that says, I got this. I'm advocating for them. That's really cool, right? So the devil's trying to prove Joshua's guilt. Jesus is the defense. Jo uh, look at verse 4 of Zechariah 3. I like this. I like this. The angel said, all these people are staring, take off his filthy clothes. Take them off. So, clothes are gone. And now the angel says, I've taken those off. I took them off of you. And I will put garments on you. Ooh. Joshua's standing there in filthy clothes. The devil says, see, aren't you wearing filthy clothes? And immediately, this is how fast this works. Now, you've got to be quick, all right? Aren't you wearing filthy clothes? Boop, no. I thought I was wearing filthy clothes. That's how fast Jesus does. The devil will accuse. You will go, no, not me. You mean it's not even there? You mean that there's nothing to even accuse me of once he starts to accuse me? That's what I'm saying. Didn't you just, no. But you, no. Because, remember, this thing's happening above us. The devil goes, God, look how bad they are. I don't see nothing. Look how big of a sinner he is. Can't tell. What do you mean? He's wearing my son's clothes. I don't even see him. I don't recognize the sinner. I recognize the guy who paid the price for it. I mean, if the devil pouted, that's when he should pout. And that's what's going on. Then why? Then why are you, why are you not able to walk through this planet and understand it? Because you believe what the devil says about you. Look at verse 5. That's really cool. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they, may, so they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. Was there another one? Is there another verse in there? Or did I just give you all of them? Oh, okay, so here's the symbol here. He didn't say, okay, now, you're on probation. Look at verse 6. You're on probation. I want you to go get straightened out, and when you come back, uh, we'll, we'll let you work your way up, and then once you work your way up and you've proven yourself, we'll put you back in a position. Or, I tell you, because, let me tell you, if you come back and there's any sort of slip-up, out. He doesn't do that. He basically says, yeah, go one more. <laughs> Sorry. But he basically says, get back to work. If you'll walk with in obedience to me, okay, if you'll follow me, all right, if you'll stay behind me, and you'll govern my house and have charge of my courts, and I'll give you a place among these standing here. Back to work. Back to work. You see, if the devil can get you to buy the accusation, you're not working. What Jesus says is, back to work. God says, back to work. What am I supposed to be doing? Following me. No, no, no. I mean, what do I got to do to make this right? Follow me. You're wearing new clothes. Get back to work. You don't have to prove yourself to me. You don't have to pay penance. You don't have to 
Get back to work. Quit believing what he says about you. Believe what I say about you. What does God, okay, so, wow, we're doing all right. I mean, I'm not going anywhere to eat, though. I'm going to jump forward. What, so what does, what, what does he say about you? Does anybody know what God says about you? How, how do we, God says you, you were bought with a price. You, you've been paid for, so you belong to him. God, God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God says, once I've got you in the palm of my hand, I'll never let go. God says, you are a child of the king. God says, you are my beloved. God says, all these things about, God says that nothing about you, nothing that comes against you will prosper. God says that there's going to be things coming at you, but they're not going to affect you. Paul comes along and he says, you want me to show you how that happens? You put on the armor of God. You put on this breastplate of righteousness. You put on this helmet of salvation. So when the devil says, you'll never be saved and this thing, thing's over, you go, I'm saved. This whole thing's over. Huh? You're going to stand behind the shield of your faith. So when he throws a dart at you, you go, no, 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 no. Uh-uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yes, I screwed up. It's okay. I took that on myself, but God's got me covered. We're okay. I'm going to put on these shoes, and I'm going to go be peaceful, and I'm going to share the gospel. No, you're not able to do that because, no, no, I'm behind my shield. I'm doing this with my feet. I'm going on this. And then he gives you, and he says, you got an offensive weapon. What does God say you are? You're a guy holding a sword. You're, you're a guy... That's not the Bible, okay? I know we like to call it the Bible. That's not what he was talking about because they didn't have a Bible, okay? So we have the Word of God, which is every word that comes out of God's mouth, all right? So what do you have inside of you that whenever the devil accuses you of something, you have everything that God has. You have every word that God would have ever thought. You have everything that God has ever wanted to speak or could speak or will speak in your body, in your mouth. It's called Christ. It's way better than just a book you can hold. The Word of God, meaning what God says about you, you get to stab back. You're not worthy. I am worthy because of who Christ is inside of me. See, it came back. That's what God said about me. You sinned. God doesn't love you anymore. Absolutely not. God says, I'm still going to sin, but he's going to love me anyway. Poke back. You have it. You've got the defense and you've got the offense. Something's on far. <laughs> it's not us. We're okay. Guys, won't y'all come back up? Can y'all do one more song? Would y'all like to hear one more song? Yeah. They're gonna they'll, they'll send us out. They'll, they'll send us out excited. And, and, and we kind of talked about this. I want you to go out pumped up. But I want that pumped up to not become, not because of the song, but because of the guy they're singing about. Because this world needs to see you pumped up over Christ. Amen. They need to see you not getting beat down because of what's going on on the planet. They need to see you not scared because of a church shooting. They need to see you not scared because Muslims are killing other people. They need to see you not scared because people are getting beheaded. They need to see you not even getting riled up, all right, because you can't fix that. They need to see you with joy about the God that's inside of you no matter what. And that's a pumped up life. They need to see you, I just promise you this, the financial thing, it's going to fall again. It will. It's just the nature of the beast. They need to see you strong even when everybody else and even you lose monetarily they need to see you in it to win because of him that's what they need so when we walk out of here don't just get pumped up because you had a great sermon from a great preacher man i mean he was good today i mean he was on fire i mean but don't let that be your own thing no stop don't don't let that be your own thing let that be i kid and don't let it be because you know you're a great band and they're fired up let it be because god has re revealed to you and reminded you who you are and who you belong to. And just know that as soon as you walk out, probably before you even stand up, the devil's going to go, mm-mm, mm-mm, not you. That may be everybody else in here, but not you. You're way too bad. Yeah, you've been at this way too long.
you're probably not even saved. Listen, when the devil says you're probably not even saved, get saved right then. I mean, that freaks him out. <laughs> God saved my soul. Now what you going to say? <laughs> right? I may not have been. I am now. <laughs> yes, I have weird conversations with the devil. It's okay. But they need to see that. They need to see you pumped up. Let's stand. I'm going to pray for you, and then they're going to play, and we're going to sing, and we'll get out of here. I'll meet you at the door when the song is over. God, I pray that we're just mindful of what's going on around us and who it's doing it. And it's not really about us anyway. God, may my pride and my ego go away enough that I realize you've got this thought for me and that I don't have to believe what flesh says I am. But I can believe who I belong to. Thank you for being that in my life. Thank you for always being present. Thank you for the ability to put on that armor and to fight it off. May your kingdom prosper. In your name I pray. Amen. Come on, everybody clap. Come on. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. A love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. A love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom And oh, this world I'll overcome Cause my God's not dead He's surely alive and He's living on the inside Roaring like a lion, my God's not dead Surely alive and He's living on the inside Roaring like a lion Sing, let hope arise. Let hope arise and make the darkness hide. My faith is dead. I need a resurrection somehow. Let hope arise and make the darkness hide. My faith is dead, I need a resurrection somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. Oh, this world I overcome. Cause my God's now dead, he's surely alive and he's living on the inside. Rowing like a lion, my God's not dead. Surely alive and he's living on the inside. Rowing like a lion, my God's not dead. Surely alive and he's living on the inside. Rowing like a lion, my God's not dead. 
surely alive and he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. And come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. And come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. And come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. And come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Cause my God's now dead, surely alive, and he's living on the inside. Roaring like a lion, my God's now dead. Surely alive and he's living on the inside. Rowing like a lion, my God's not dead. Surely alive and he's living on the inside. Rowing like a lion, my God's not dead. Surely alive and he's living on the inside. Rowing like a lion. Yay, hey, my God's not dead, amen. Hey. All right, let me pray out of here real quick. Father God, I thank you for each and every person here today, Lord, that made the decision to come to this church, Lord. And bless them, Lord, as they go out uh, throughout the community today, Lord, and, and help them if they're at, uh, at a Sandcastle competition, going to lunch, wherever, Lord. It, it, when this song just sticks in their head, my God's not dead, Lord, just help them to sing really well so they're not off key, Lord. Just, just bless them, Lord, and help them. My God's not dead. I thank you. I ask you in this Jesus' name. Amen.